years of tax pain to come is the analysis for lots of the papers this morning. For whom do you think it's going to be the most painful? Well, I think um, the best off. Uh, now, of course, the, the government has said that it wants those that are you know, pretty well off in society to bear much of the burden, and uh, you could argue that that's fair enough. But I think the striking thing about this budget is the way that it's a rejection, not only of the measures and the approach that Quasi Courting announced only a matter of weeks ago, but quite frankly, just about all traditional Tory economic thinking. It really is, in a, in a way, it's a reverse revolution. Have they swung too far the other way? The OBR, Office of Budget Responsibility, saying we are in recession at the moment, likely to be next year maybe 1.4% uh, contraction in the economy rather than any growth, given that the Bank of England too will probably have to still likely rise interest rates to cope with inflation. Could they be stopping the economy in its tracks? Well, I, I, I doubt it, because this was quite cleverly crafted in the sense that the tightening measures come very late in the period. And indeed, in the next couple of years, the Treasury is actually giving fiscal support to the economy. It's putting money in. Now, I think probably that's the right thing to do in these difficult circumstances. But as you imply, that puts all of the burden on the Bank of England. Now, before this statement, there was some question as to whether whatever he was going to do was going to take the burden or bit of the burden off the Bank of England. Uh, it's done quite the opposite. So I'm very much of the view that base rates are going up to something like 5%. It sounds as though you're dissatisfied with the announcements that, that came out yesterday. What do you think was missing? Are there any opportunities lost? Well, I, I think there are two angles to this. One is the straightforwardly economic one. And I am not really quibbling about the overall judgment. I think it's quite clever. The second is the composition of the measures and looking at things from a conservative point of view. And with regard to that uh, latter stance, I'm frankly appalled. It's not a conservative budget at all. It could have been given by Gordon Brown. But was it perhaps designed as an emergency measure to try and reassure the markets and going back to what they call Treasury orthodoxy, don't you know, scare the horses once again, and that maybe come next spring for another budget proper, we'll see more Tory measures once they assess what this has done to the economy? Well, I guess that's possible, but I don't really think it's very likely. Uh, the fact of the matter is the markets are now back on side. They were back yeah. on side apparently before the statement. And the markets aren't really that much bothered about the balance between spending cuts and tax rises. They're bothered about the overall level of debt and borrowing. Mm. Uh, that's the straightforward economic judgment. What I'm interested in is the distribution, the things that the markets aren't interested in, the distribution of the measures between spending cuts and, uh, and tax rises. And you're right, if things improve, it's possible that uh, the Chancellor can announce some tax cuts. But his uh, priorities seem to be so clearly in favour of spending, as and when the pressure eases and it looks as though the fiscal number is going to be better, I think if you were a betting man, you'd have to say that this government would spend that money on more public spending.